All right, guys, so those of you that are subscribers know that I did a poll recently where I gave you the opportunity to ask me questions and I would respond to them in an upcoming video. And I actually got a couple of questions related to personal finance in Spain. And having lived here for two and a half years and being someone who's really into personal finance, investing, saving, all that kind of stuff, I've really looked into how this stuff works in Spain. So in this video, what I'm going to try and give is an overview of personal finance in Spain. So if you've recently looked located to Spain, if you're looking to move to Spain, if you're a non-resident and you're looking for what to do with your money in terms of opening a bank account, savings account, investing platforms, credit cards, pensions, this video is for you and we're going to go right into it. So let's get into the video. So let's get right into it and let's start with banking. Now in Spain, you have a lot of traditional banks that have been in the country and been operating for a long time. Some of these big names will be, of course, Banco Santander, BBVA or BBVA as it's known in Spanish, CaixaBank, uh, Banco Sabadell and Bank Inter, for example, just to name some of the bigger banks. You've, of course, had in the past also had a bank called Bankia, which merged with CaixaBank uh, last year. We've also got some smaller, more local banks known as Cajas, perhaps Cajas Rurales, Cajas de Ahorro. Um, so yeah, these are just like the traditional banks, but on a smaller scale and perhaps more concentrated on a particular geographic area. And recently in Spain, like many other places in the world, uh, digital banking has arrived. So you have digital banks like Evo Banco and Open Bank, uh, which are Spanish digital banks uh, operating from within Spain. And you've also got some of the more international banks such as N26, Revolut, uh, Vivid, that also operate within Spain as well. So let's start with current accounts. Now, in the past, traditionally when talking about opening a current account, a lot of these traditional banks uh, have charged commissions for having the account. They might charge you a quarterly or a monthly fee uh, for you to have an account with them. However, with the arrival of digital banks, the sector has of course become more competitive as a lot of these new players are offering uh, commission-free services. So you're starting to see commissions essentially disappear from the sector. There may be one or two banks that still do charge commissions, um, but in, for the most part, there are plenty of banks out there, particularly the digital ones that offer commission-free uh, current account banking. What you also have when opening a current account are a lot of welcome offers, so a lot of banks will give you enticing new offers for you to sign up and open an account with them. For example, Open Bank uh, currently have an offer on where they'll give you 40 euros if you open an account and you make it uh, your main account. That's to say uh, your pay slip if you're employed in Spain is paid into there. You've also got uh, banks like Bankinter uh, that will offer you 5% uh, interest on a balance up to 5,000 euros for the first year, which will then drop to 2% in the second year and one in the third year. And this I find I think is one of the best offers uh, in the banking sector. Uh, there's very few banks that are offering uh, close to that. And just to give you one more example, so you have a banker which will offer you 300 euros if you open a current account with them and make it again the account that your pay slip is paid into. So a lot of offers out there when it comes to opening a current account in Spain and a lot of nice welcome deals, and nice welcome offers on the table to try and get you in the door as well. Just make sure uh, that you do check the terms and conditions. There may be uh, certain conditions um, and these uh, offers may be contingent on those conditions. So do just check through before you, you open the account as well. When it comes to savings account, it's probably old news that there's not really that many good offers out there in terms of interest rates. But I've particularly found that to be the case in Spain. Uh, there's a lot of cases where, you know, interest rates are less than even 0.5%. So savings accounts in Spain, um, personally, I, I really struggle to recommend some good savings accounts out there. And I would probably suggest uh, looking at something like this, this offer from Bank Inter or another Cuenta Remunerada, as it's known in Spanish, a remunerated current account, uh, which will essentially generate a balance on the interest you have in your current account. Uh, because if you think, if you're looking for a place to keep money, um, where you have access to it quickly, but it doesn't lose too much purchasing power through inflation, then probably a, a remunerated current account, a cuenta remunerada, is the best solution for you in this case. Now, if you're a non-resident in Spain, that means you spend less than 183 days uh, of the tax year from January to December in the country, then you can open a non-resident bank account if you have 
uh, legitimate business interests or perhaps you have a property uh, that you need to pay uh, bills for from the from Spain. So there is a possibility to open a non-resident bank account in Spain. Non-resident bank accounts tend to be more a solution provided by the traditional banks. So the BBVA, the Santander, the Bank Inters, the Caixa Bank. So if you want to go check them out um, for their non-resident solutions, then you can do as well. And some of these banks will also let you open uh, non-euro bank accounts as well. So perhaps you want to hold pounds or you want to hold US dollars in your bank account, then some of these banks also offer those kind of services. What you might expect though is kind of some operational commissions, uh, a fee to keep the account running. So worth checking that out as well. And to open this, you may be asked for certain documents as well, like your proof of residence, uh, proof of your income, uh, either in your home country or in Spain. And they may also ask for bank references from your home country as well. But this will very much depend on the entity that you're working with. Now, let's move on to investing. So when it comes to investing in Spain, you have various uh, different types of platforms. So you can invest uh, using a cuenta de valores, so an investment account, uh, which you can open through uh, one of the major banks, like I said, one of the traditional banks. You'll find a range of assets such as stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, sometimes even options and futures through some of the, the major banks uh, investing platforms as well. One of the drawbacks though of going through one of the major banks is that they will often charge uh, commissions uh, per operation and they may even charge maintenance commissions as well. Um, generally starting from around three euros per operation, depending on, of course, course which entity you work with and they may even have tiered pricing so if your order is over a certain value um, then again the commission might go up based on the, the value of the order. Outside of the major banks there are a few other platforms in Spain that offer investing services so Open Bank I mentioned before one of the digital banks have a robo investing service that's to say uh, you can set up a recurring amount that you pay in um, and based on a portfolio style so if you're an aggressive or conservative investor you can pick uh, a pre-made uh, investing uh, portfolio and the robo investor will essentially invest that automatically for you over over a period of time. You can find similar services offered by Indexa who also offer uh, index and mutual funds on their platform as well. So do My Investor, another investing platform. And I've found from using a couple of these platforms that the commissions tend to be a little bit lower than some of the traditional banks as well. So you might want to look into some of these. And if you're looking at investing in assets like Vanguard or iShares, then you can invest in Vanguard via uh, My Investor and via Indexa as well. So those are your Spanish investing platform options. You've also got uh, other brokers that are based elsewhere in Europe, such as the Giro, such as Trading212, which are my two preferred options. You can find sign up links in the video description if you want to go and check them out. I've also produced content on how these platforms work as well. And then a whole host of other European platforms such as XTB, eToro and Interactive Brokers as well are also platforms that you can open up from Spain. One thing to note when choosing your investing platform, though I wouldn't let this be a major influencing factor, is that if your broker is already within Spain, so for example if you go through a major bank, if you open uh, an account with My Investor for example, then these platforms uh, have a record of your transactions, whether you receive dividends, if you buy or sell assets and they report that information directly to the tax authorities, so Hacienda. And then when it comes around to doing your annual tax declaration, your draft declaration will be automatically populated with the information from the broker. The difference, of course, if you are using a platform like Digido, like Trading212, these brokers are domiciled outside of Spain, so you will need to fill in the details of your transactions manually. Though a lot of these services produce reports for you to help you with that. And a final point to cover on investing is in Spain that if you invest in planes de pensiones or pension plans, then you do get some tax relief. So if you have employment or self-employed income in Spain and you contribute some of that money into a pension plan, then it reduces your taxable uh, income essentially. So you, you pay less tax as a result. I've got a video where I talk more about how this works in detail. If you wanna go check that out, I'll leave the link up there. And then the final 
final point I'll touch on is kind of loans and credit cards. So I've done a full video where I talk about getting mortgages in Spain. I actually got to speak to a Spanish mortgage advisor who gave her insight on getting a mortgage. So again, I'll leave that video uh, in the description and, and, and up at the top for you. So we'll talk about credit cards now. So there are some interesting offers uh, on credit cards here in Spain. Uh, some of the ones that have stood out to me include, you know, the American Express cards. Uh, I mean, the offer with American Express is pretty standard across countries. So you'll get uh, American Express points uh, as you spend. You tend to get a welcome bonus as well a lot of the time. Um, and you can use those American Express points uh, on things like travel. You can use it to cover some of your credit card bill each month as well. You've got the Iberia credit card, which uh, similar to British Airways, uh, similar to a lot of other credit cards like Air France, KLM. So with every transaction that you make, you accumulate Avios points. Sometimes you'll get double Avios points, or if you hit a certain threshold of spending, then they might give you uh, a few thousand uh, Avios extra. And then you can use those Avios points to book a flight with Iberia or perhaps of British Airways, if you've got an account with British Airways as well, you can transfer Avios between British and Iberia accounts. Another credit card that caught my attention was the Wizink Me card. Now you get typically a sign-on bonus from Wizink in the form of an Amazon voucher at the moment at the time of doing this video. I think it's around 100 euros, so quite a generous offer. And in addition to that, you get cash back on three categories of your choice, so whether it's transport, whether it's restaurants, whether it's entertainment, uh, the choice is really yours. You can pick three categories and you'll get some cash back when you spend on those items. And then you've got your credit cards like Open Bank, like Avanka, which will give you cash back on on petrol or gas, or they might give you cash back on booking.com, for example. Of course, talking about credit cards here, do uh, use your credit cards responsibly. Personally, I only use my credit cards for regular expenses and I make sure that my bill is paid off at the end of the month. And so finally, I wanna leave you with what I consider to be the best personal finance websites in Spain. They are all in Spanish, but the content on there is very, very useful, very helpful when it comes to understanding the different offers uh, and the different ways that different financial products in Spain work. So my three go-to websites when it comes to looking into personal finance in Spain are finect.com, rankia.com, and helpmycash.com. I'll leave the links in the video description, but I find the information on there is precise, it's accurate, uh, they're updated regularly, and it's very easy to stay up to date with uh, the constant developments and what's going on in Spain uh, from a financial perspective. So I hope you guys found this video helpful, particularly those of you who had questions about uh, savings accounts and investing in Spain. I hope that uh, this video has pushed you in the right direction and given you the information that you need. Leave a comment and let me know if you're in Spain, how you found setting up your personal finances here. Now, why not check out my other videos? And if you like this one and you wanna see more content like it, then make sure you hit the subscribe button with the notification bell so you don't miss a single update. I'll see you on the next one and let's get this money.